Welcome back to Slam 1 here on Fight Network. And we are set for a bantamweight tilt, one that is near and dear to our heart, as Derek Charbonneau looks to make his professional debut a successful one. But he is taking on the 43-year-old Fight Network representative, Mr. Robin Black. Yes, and I think we have to be uh, objective broadcast journalists here, uh, John Rambine, as we uh, we did get to see firsthand Robin's preparation for this fight. And as you mentioned, uh, 43 years of age, I think we can both step back and really uh, marvel here at just Robin Black and uh, what he has put into this training camp coming back. And Charbonneau, uh, not a young guy either here, has an extensive amateur background as well. He's actually fought Eamon Zahabi uh, in the amateur ranks here and uh, coming back to take on Robin who has not fought since January of 2011 but I guess uh, continuing on his quest here of uh, a major bucket list here of uh, fighting here professionally and Robin uh, will be coming out just momentarily. Charbonneau says that he would love to get a victory over the former rock star considering his uh, how high his profile is especially here in the Great White North and it would start his journey to the Ultimate Fighting Championship. That is his ultimate goal, as it is many fighters competing in mixed martial arts right now. But he will be in tough because, as you mentioned, John, we had a chance to see Robin's preparation for this fight. I know he was working with uh, Billy Martin, the boxing coach of uh, former IBF champion Steve Molitor, as well as working his wrestling abilities with former TKO featherweight champion Adrian uh, the Bully Wooly. Uh, Robin has not neglected any aspect of his game, as well as working his jiu-jitsu game at the open mat with uh, Elliot Bayev, a black belt under Sean Williams. So I think that uh, Robin will be well prepared and he's gonna need it. Derek Charbonneau coming with that kickboxing background will look to take off Robin's head uh, as quickly as humanly possible. Yes, and as we've seen, John, I mean, at any level you wanna look at, the idea of you know mixed martial arts simply being a hobby, I mean, that is something that is uh, pretty much extinct uh, at this sport at this level right now in the sport. I mean, you have to be putting those man hours into it, and that's uh, what we're going to see in this fight. For Robin Black, he, he says, he told us that the reason why he still gets in there at, at his age and wants to compete is to really have a better understanding of what these athletes go through, the weight cut, the mental preparations, and he feels that uh, by getting inside of the cage, it will only help with his job as a, as a broadcast journalist and a color commentator. So... With that note, Mr. Black is getting set to make his way to the cage. And the combatant, in the coin rouge, Robin Black. Robin Black coming out to the sounds of Aerosmith. Seems very, very calm, which is very odd if you know this guy. Oh, yeah, he's always on edge. A real uh, short temper and... Uh, evenly distraught man is Robin Black here, who uh, even here in this kind of situation, uh, looking calm, cool, and collected. And uh, you were there firsthand, John, and uh, know the, the weight cut he went through uh, to make 135 here. And uh, that to me is something you always kind of uh, worry about in terms of how, how hard a cut is for someone, especially when they're, they're getting back into things after a year and a half of uh, not fighting. Well, Robin's a smart guy, and he knows that uh, you have to have every single advantage you possibly can get in this game of mixed martial arts. And he knew that uh, Charbonneau's not that big of a guy. Robin felt one of his tools, or one of his biggest weapons, would be to come in bigger, come in stronger, and have a deeper gas tank. So he took all the necessary steps to make sure that he was physically and mentally prepared to go 15 hard, full minutes against Charbonneau. And uh, let's see if he did enough work as he's taking on a guy you know, much younger than he is. Yep, absolutely. I mean, Robin Black, 43 years of age, uh, something that you look at Robin and you would never guess here. I mean, actually looks the younger of the two, uh, but someone that, uh, I mean, this guy I think has a few books in him uh, one day if he ever wants to uh, sit down and has enough time to uh, put pen to paper. And John, don't forget another a, a loaded card for fight fans. We mentioned our main event, Alex Garcia taking on Stefan Lamarche. And the co-feature, Jordan Jackhammer Jewel taking on submission fighter Olivier Aubin Mercier from H2O in Montreal. And Eamon Zahabi takes on Kyle Vivian in a 135-pound matchup. And after this fight between Robin Black and Derek Charbonneau, one of the best American jiu-jitsu practitioners. Ryan Hall takes on Philip Deschambeau. 
DeChambeau with far more experience. We've got a, a Wei Ting cameo on top of things, yeah. though, John. So lots of uh, fight network involvement here in this fight. Yeah, Ryan Hall coming up, Eamon Zahabi, and Robin Black, actually, when you look at things here on, on paper, one of the veterans on this yep. card, John. And you can see here, uh, John, you, just over 24 hours after making weight, Robin looking uh, fantastic here at 135. Le deuxième combat de la soirée sous la supervision de l'arbitre Eric Filippo. Allons-y avec la présentation des combattants. Dans le coin bleu de Hanover en Ontario, accusant la pesée 134.5 livres, faisant ses débuts professionnels ce soir à Slam 1, Derek Charbonneau! Dans le coin rouge de Toronto, en Ontario, accusant la pesée 135.2 livres, avec un record professionnel de 3 victoires, 5 défaites, Robin Black! All right, we are getting set. Three five-minute rounds in the 135-pound division. Robin Black in the red shorts. Derek Charbonneau in the red shorts. Robin Black has the tattoos. Let's just uh, put it that way. I don't way. think anyone is really wondering which one is Robin Black and which one is Derek Charbonneau. We are underway. The two fighters touch gloves. And it's Black who tries to assert his dominance early and a nice knee to the body of Charbonneau. Charbonneau trying to tie up with the former rock star. This is where I think experience can always be a, a bit of an edge in terms of, you know, any of those kind of pre-fight butterflies and remaining calm in these kind of situations where you're just, you know, avoiding the, the clinch work here. And uh, Robin, I think, showing that kind of uh, patience here and getting the takedown here. Now trying to come around on top of Charbonneau. Charbonneau fighting diligently to get the better position, but Robin Black now taking the back of Charbonneau. And he's got that one hook in with, with the left leg, but uh, onto his back and closing his guard. And Robin, I know, prides himself in this position. He's able to throw up triangle chokes and look for sweeps and arm bars. But he told me his goal is to make his boxing coach proud and get the knockout. Of course, that's easier said than done. And he looks to be going for that exact triangle you were forecasting there, John, trying a. Now the omoplata by Black, maybe trying to sneak under the neck and maybe a go-go plata, but Charbonneau wise to it and backs away. Tried to slam his fist into the face of Robin Black. Black again forcing him up against the cage, proving that he is the bigger, stronger of the two. Digging to the body now is Black. And I think just from that brief time spent all off of his back, uh, Robin very confident with, with, with his guard game here. And I think uh, should this fight go to the ground, I think Charbonneau uh, very aware here how active uh, Robin is uh, from his guard. Short little left hand to the chin. Black now. Tying up with Charbonneau, looking maybe to get the fight down to the ground once again, and a nice knee to the midsection of Charbonneau. Robin certainly controlling just uh, the positional battle here and uh, and controlling Charbonneau against the cage, and looks to be uh, you know looking for that that trip takedown uh, as he's using his his, uh, his left uh, leg. Some good work from Robin Black up against the cage. And this is definitely going to sap the energy of Charbonneau and a couple of good, powerful punches by Robin, followed by a shot to the body. Yeah, Charbonneau has got to get out of this position because uh, the, those knees, those really uh, accumulate, and uh, you, you feel those as the fight progresses here, and Robin just uh, controlling him here, and once he gets his striking going, I mean, this is just a bad position for Charbonneau. He's got to uh, try and reverse and get out of this with his back on the cage presently. Charbonneau almost giving up his back there. Really seems bewildered as Black in full control. And there we see Robin Black pushing his head into the chin of Charbonneau. 
making it very uncomfortable as he hammers away with those left hands and finishes with the left knee to the midsection. Well, that's key, and uh, you know, Charbonneau, I think he's he's got to adjust here and try try and uh, reverse this because it it just seems here that uh, he is not really actively trying to get out of this position. And Robin just. Uh, Showing his superior strength right here and just kind of bullying him against the cage. And, oh! and a thunderous knee to the head followed up Charbonneau's with another in trouble one. now. And this was the game plan from Black. Charbonneau trying to wrap his arm around the head of Black. Looks like he's going down to the ground, and yes, he does. And you hear Charbonneau's corner say half guard defense. I'm sure they anticipated that they would be in this position. Because if you do any scouting on Robin, and look at the head and arm choke, could be coming. And you look. can see Charbonneau putting his arm around, trying to go for uh, uh, some form of guillotine, and Robin just easily uh, removing that arm in any kind of danger Charbonneau was presenting. Black almost passed the legs of Charbonneau. Robin can get that right leg through. He might be able to put some pressure here onto Charbonneau as we are getting down to the uh, closing seconds of this opening round. And that seems to be what he's doing here, using that le left foot with leverage. When we come back, round number two between Robin Black and Derek Charbonneau here on Slam One. Welcome back to the Sports Scene Complex in Mont Saint Hilaire, Quebec, for Slam One here on Fight Network, and we are getting set for round number two between Robin Black and Derek Charbonneau. John Pollock and John Ramdeen calling the action, and John, I think it's safe to say that Robin was in full control of that first round. Oh, easily, his striking and uh, even working off of his back. I mean, that was a clear round for for Mr. Black, who I got to applaud you, Ram, you have not called me Robin once here. <laughs> well, we still have a number of fights to go here. But uh, Derek Charbonneau certainly uh, getting some advice from his corner. He is going to have to change things up, and I am uh, looking forward to seeing how he changes uh, his game up after that first round. Charbonneau headhunting, and Black quickly ties him up and look, looking for that takedown and gets it right into the full mount. And this is where we saw Mr. Black in that first round towards the end of the round, looking for that head and arm choke. Will he be able to finish from this position? He's trying to flatten out uh, Charbonneau here and uh, Robin just staying very calm on top here and just using that, that pressure game on, on top of Charbonneau, who really has not been able to find much of an answer here for Robin's strength, just uh, using his striking at will here against Charbonneau. Charbonneau looking for the sweep. Black proving that his base is just too solid. Slowly grinding, putting a lot of pressure on the French fighter. Robin Black, the youngest 43-year-old in mixed martial arts. Great finding the legs of Charbonneau, really not giving him any option of trying to escape. And Charbonneau, he just, uh, I, I think, needs to, to try and just shrimp his way out of this and, and get Robin on top, off of him. But Robin is just in such a dominant position right now that Robin doesn't really need to show any kind of a necessity here. He can really just uh, be calm, stay on top, uh, and let, let Charbonneau expend his energy off of his back. And it's only going to play to Robin here. And that was uh, Robin's game plan, is to really be ready to go 15 full minutes. Of course, he wants to end the fight uh, before the allotted 15 minutes, but... He says physically he's ready to go the full distance if need be. His goal is to just make Charbonneau carry his weight, grind him out, and now looking for that submission. Oh, and he's got a Kimura. The referee is getting in right there, and Derek Charbonneau, this is certainly uh, registering, as you can see, and he... And that, that is, is it. it. The referee comes in and stops this contest. Robin Black awarded the Kimura victory, and there you see a very happy Robin Black. That was a phenomenal performance uh, from Robin Black. I mean, you really couldn't ask for a better performance. Yes, he ate a couple of punches, but that's what happens in a fight. And I think if... Uh... And, and, and he knew getting on top of Charbonneau like that in that dominant mount position that he could simply stay on top of him. Derek could, you know, start making mistakes, leaving an arm open, and that was where Robin uh, just jumped on top of and, and getting the Kimura for the stoppage. 
And to be fair to Derek Charbonneau, it is his professional debut uh, for Robin Black. It's his ninth time fighting as a professional. So uh, lots of experience going to the Toronto-based fighter. And Robin improves now to four and five. And you've got to wonder if uh, that elusive 500 record might bring Robin Black back to the cage. You never know. I think John Randine does know. I think he's just not going to tell anybody. You see a very big smile. Getting the pose for the victory there is Robin Black. That's a happy up. individual. Yes, sir, it is. That being said, I don't think I have ever seen Robin Black angry either. And a lot of respect here amongst uh, both guys here. And Robin, uh, very relieved after a long fight camp. Et le gagnant de cet affrontement par arrêt de l'arbitre TKO au deuxième round à 2 minutes 4 secondes avec un Kimura by TKO stop of the referee Robin Black! All right, I'm with uh, Robin in the ring, Robin. You uh, did a great fight, tried to uh, go for the submission in the first round, didn't work, come back for it in the second round, and finally, you, get a, you got his arm and you won, so it's, it's a great fight. Thank you, I just wanted to, I was just so determined to win. I just want to thank my beautiful wife, Erica, for being my biggest fan and supporting me, and, and Mark andre my very best friend and my manager and my best man, and he's come with me through every fight, and I love him. And my coach, Billy Martin, who's given me this great gift of martial arts, and Jeff Gervitz, who helped me in Extreme Couture, and uh, a lot of other people. This was so great. I'm so happy right now. Everybody to the phone. Robin Black, thanks. Robin Black, victorious by submission here at Slam 1. When we return, it is the master of the 50-50 guard, Ryan Hall, as he goes to battle with Philip Deschambault.